So hello everyone again. Uh, my name is Jason Carter. I am the Assistant Director of College Access at DePaul University. And welcome back to our Majors to Careers interview session. Um, in our Majors to Careers session, what we do is we interview professors and professionals um, in various career industries to give information to people like you who are watching these videos, students and parents, so you can get an insight of what's actually going on in those career industries. Um, and so you can get that insider knowledge and understand what steps it takes to become a professional in that field. Today I have with us Professor Sandra Guy, and she's going to be talking more to us about the journalism profession and all of the steps she's taken to become a award-winning professional in her industry. Um, so I'll let Professor Guy introduce herself a little bit more. So Professor Guy, thank you for being here today and tell us about what you do um, at DePaul. Great. Well, I'm excited to tell you how many resources DePaul University has for people who want to go into journalism. You have an amazingly award-winning, and I mean national awards, award-winning student-run newspaper, magazine, television station, and radio station. So I have been a journalist for 40 years, and I've written for the Chicago Sun-Times for 21 years. But I am from a small town in Appalachia, which only had one stoplight. So I tell my students, I'm also a first generation college student. My parents did not go to college. My sister and I were the first in their families. And I tell people, you know, don't be afraid to dream big. You can make your career at DePaul by being involved in student media and networking so it's just a great opportunity. So Professor Guy, what made you want to do journalism? So all of these years ago, when you were a little girl, what made you decide to want to take on this field in this industry? Well, my parents were very world aware. They were great readers. We had all kinds of books in the house. We got two newspapers delivered to our house every morning, and my father did 28 bombing missions over Germany during all of World War II. They were flying out of Great Britain. My mother was a chemist, so they knew the world. They were big readers, and we were just always aware of politics and the news around us. So I have an identical twin sister. And she and I would get up early before school and read a newspaper. So I just grew up being surrounded by uh, listening to news on the radio, uh, watching 60 Minutes, reading newspapers, and just being very aware of the world. And partly my um, progressive upbringing, including in the church, um, really taught me what can I do for the world? What can I do to let people know what's going on in the world? Just as I learned from the media growing up. And, you know, part of my growing up was in the 60s. So a part of that was, you know, truth telling and speaking up to power. Great, great, awesome. So. You talked about your influence getting into the industry. Um, so tell us, how did you end up with your position at DePaul University? So what was your journey like to becoming a professor here at DePaul? Well, actually, I was invited to speak to a journalism class, um, and I really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed telling the students the many ways that you can do journalism, because now with technology, you can be online, you can be on television, on a website, you can do all kinds of different kinds of work in journalism. And as I was learning that, because um, we went from cutting and pasting um, paper onto paper to going out in the field with our iPhones to take photos and tweet out in the field. And I just found myself enjoying 
uh, telling students how many different things they could do in the journalism field that I myself was learning at the time. Now, what are some of those different things that you can do in the field uh, with the new advancements in technology and the, the new age of the virtual age that we're in? What are some changes between when you started in journalism that you've seen now? So you talked about the tweets and the advancements in technology, but what other things have uh, revolutionized the industry of journalism? I think one of the key things is learning how to write for different media. So in, you know, in the earlier days, you were either in television or you were newspaper or you were online. Now, you know, you may write for a television station, the script, but then you also may write that story for the web. So that's two different kinds of writing. I think you can be more creative. I never uh, took photos until the last several years. Um, so now you go out in the field, you can be the photographer. You can write for the web, like just a snippet or send out a tweet and then come back and write a longer story. The same thing for a magazine. You may write a long feature story, but then you'll be asked to redo it for the website. Um, so I think you can be more creative. You can have uh, allow yourself to find different styles of writing and you're not quite so pigeonholed. Okay, great, great. Um, so tell us about some of the courses that you teach at DePaul and what are some of the classes like and what are some of your students saying? So I start with introduction to journalism. Um, I love teaching that because I require students to get involved immediately with a student media organization, whether that's the newspaper, the online magazine, the radio station, TV, or join the Society of Professional Journalists or the National Association of Hispanic Journalists. There are all kinds of professional journalism organizations in Chicago. We are in the third largest media market in the United States. So the students, even from freshman year introduction to journalism, have wonderful opportunity to get their bylines out there, to start a sizzle reel for television, to start their own podcast or radio show. And every time they pitch, like say a radio show and they get their own radio show or they see the byline in the newspaper, everyone gets so excited. To, and you're being read and listened to by top editors and producers in this market. So it's a great way to really get your career started, even from the very beginning. And I really love seeing the energy and how excited the students are to get that kind of start. It's really a big deal. Um, and then I teach news reporting, which is the next level class. And I let students go out and not as, of course, now with the pandemic, uh, they can interview people closer to them or not necessarily, of course, not go out in crowds, but do interviews themselves, come up with their own stories. And today's editors, today's producers want students' stories. They want the stories of your neighborhood, of what are people, students' ages doing? What music are they listening to? Um, what news, um, what cultural events? And many of my students have been published either in the Chicago Tribune, the Sun-Times, or on Univision uh, because the editors and producers in this market watch student media. So I just think that's an incredible opportunity. I also teach senior level capstone, which is the final portfolio building class of journalism students. And I also teach graduate level journalism. And I've had students beat the New York Times on a story. I've had them beat the Chicago Tribune on a story. And so it's a lot of great ground level experience of being a journalist in my classes. That sounds awesome. 
Um, so you mentioned Chicago being the third largest media market. What advantages does that give for students to come who come to DePaul to be integrated immediately into this field by being in such a media market? Well, um, one of the key parts of being in journalism is to have a network to, uh, you know, go to events or to uh, conferences, even online, of course, um, and to have mentors. And you just have all of that in so much abundance in a big city and a big market like this. And you're automatically having people see your work in a big market. So um, it's just a huge aspect of networking. Uh, DePaul has student chapters, as I mentioned, of professional journalism organizations. So the students not only get to know each other, but they also get to go to and visit uh, the top TV stations here. Uh, we have internships. Just so many students at DePaul have done internships at major media outlets in Chicago. So when you want to get a job and you put on your resume, you've done internships at the Chicago, the third largest market uh, television station or public broadcasting station, public radio station, WGN, which most people know, um, or the Tribune or the Sun-Times. It's almost considered like a ticket. You really have that ticket punched. Uh, it really um, makes a big difference uh, in terms of I can trust the student to hit the ground running when I hire the student. So, of course, it just is great for a resume and a portfolio. That's great. That's amazing. Yes, yeah, Chicago um, has such a wealth of opportunities and DePaul has been so good at leveraging the opportunities with industry here in the city and especially the journalism and news media market because there's so many people who are getting that direct Chicago news. Um, now, when you talk about high school students who may be watching this video, I mean, they're interested in this field. What are some of the preliminary steps do you think they can take to start to inch them closer to a career in this industry? Well, I would definitely read, just read, 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 read news, mass media, newspapers, um, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Chicago Sun-Times, the Chicago Tribune, USA Today, the Wall Street Journal, um, any of the major mainstream papers, watch television, listen to the news radio. We have WBBM all news 24 seven radio here so that you get the cadence of a news story. What does a news story sound like? Also, we have sports journalism at DePaul. And if you've read, you know, Sports Illustrated or you listen to a football game, you hear active verbs, you know, the bears growled their way down the field. That's a great active verb, that growl, right? So you get the cadence, you get the ear for hearing a news story. And I also would like to add that the president of the National Association of Black Journalists and the National Association of Hispanic Journalists are here in Chicago. They're working journalists in Chicago who are president of these national organizations. DePaul also has uh, lots of resources for students of all backgrounds, ethnicities. I think that's really important too, that, um, that you have opportunities here, uh, both in Chicago and at DePaul for whatever voice you prefer. So La DePaulia, which is the Spanish language student run newspaper, their stories have been picked up by Univision here in Chicago. So just know that you have a voice, that your voice could go to any number of media. But uh, so the key I would say is if you have a chance to write for your student newspaper, if you have a chance to be on the debate team, um, just read as much as you can and read and listen to the news. Awesome advice. Now, 
We talked about the student advice on the student and what they should do. Now, what should parents be doing if their child is interested in getting into the journalism field? Well, I think that you should encourage all kinds of reading, writing, and knowing the world. Um, and history is such a big deal to journalism. So whatever classes or books or resources that you can help your child with in terms of understanding history, watching news together, maybe find old clips of like 60 minutes, the news magazine, which is still on. Any way you can talk about public events, uh, about your own knowledge of public events. And another thing I found really interesting since the pandemic is what's the history of your family? Let your students interview grandma and grandpa and yourself. What was your favorite rock band? Why? Who was your favorite performer in that band? What got you interested in whatever your, your gig is, whether it's politics or cooking or mechanics. I think a big part of journalism is storytelling and that can start in the family. Many of my students have found out things about their own grandmothers that they didn't know before by doing these interviews for their stories for class. I think it's a wonderful family building opportunity to tell each other's stories and what is the family history and why are you engaged in things that make you happy? What is the story behind that? And I love that learning about other people through storytelling, the family is the place to start. Oh, that's actually great advice. Um, I've actually worked with students in the past on uh, being able to do and practice interviews with their families. And they would say the same things about how they got so much engaging information from grandpa and grandma that they never would have thought that they would have known just by asking questions. But that's an amazing advice. Um, so we talk about the, the advice for students. We talked about the advice for parents. So if students are have decided to go into the journalism field, Credentially, what would they need to become a professional? So as far as their degree level and what other types of credentials could they focus on achieving as well? Well, journalism still is quite an apprenticeship. So everyone who hires in journalism wants to see that passion and a huge portfolio that the student has been extremely involved in the student media or they've done freelancing in the local media. It's still very much, I liken it to carpentry. We can talk all day about nailing a nail, hammering a nail, but you've got to hammer the nail, right? You've got to do the work. So that's the key thing that people want to see that you're passionate about this. And you've shown that by being involved in student media, you've done the work, you've done a podcast, you've been on the TV station, you've written for the newspaper or the magazine. They want to see the work, they want to see the byline, they want to see that passion and portfolio. Um, I do think some, uh, to some extent, it helps to have a master's degree. Uh, it's not still not required in this field, but um, like my husband has his master's and I've worked for editors who have law degrees. Law degrees can be very important in the media. Um, so it really depends, but uh, the key thing is to just do that work, do that college level media work and show your passion for that. Okay, great. Now, besides the anchor man and anchor woman chair, what does the career outlook look for uh, for graduates in this field? And what um, other types of jobs could they have in this profession that are outside of just being in front of the camera? Right. Well, actually the, the best jobs, the most stable jobs, and they still pay well and have great benefits are behind the scenes. So in my own family, my sister, my husband, they're producers in television news. So the producer uh, 
lines up the stories, edits the scripts, assigns the reporters. So there are all kinds of different production jobs and they're very highly valued. They're also very stable. Producers are in huge demand in television. Television stations also have websites. So if you can run a website, write for a website, that's a big deal. If you can write a script, television uh, script writers do not go out in the field as the reporters do. They write the scripts that the anchors read inside the newsroom. So they never go out in the field, but they're highly skilled and valued because you have to work on such tight deadlines. In newspapers, you have, of course, you still have photographers and camera people, but you also have headline writers, you have copy editors, you have graphic designers, you have people who work specifically on the website itself, which is almost a whole other entity, whether you're in a magazine, a newspaper, a television station, those interactive skills, data, uh, graphics and data, um, exploring, being able to weed through data quickly and come up with what it means, or doing graphic design, um, audio visual, and engineering. All of those are wonderful and stable jobs and play a key role in any kind of media that you're going into. Well, yeah, that's awesome to be able to have so many different things that you can go into, um, because I know that a lot of students sometimes get camera shy and they don't necessarily want to be in front of the camera, but they love the field so much. So thank you for sharing all of the, the diversity that you can have in this industry. I have one student who was one of only two in the United States who won an internship, a summer internship at ESPN, and he didn't, he transferred to DePaul where he just became a journalism major, like I think his sophomore or junior year. So he got this coveted internship at ESPN. They then hired him. So he was always behind the scenes as a producer and he had story ideas. Um, he became full-time at ESPN in New York. And he just recently moved to the late show with Stephen Colbert. So oh, wow, that's amazing. You can take your skills. I've had him speak to my classes. I've had students intern at the public TV stations, the Sun-Times, USA Today, um, not just as writers, but as fact checkers, uh, people who weed through the data as graphics people, uh, people who work only on the website. Um, you know, there are just so many success stories because once you've proven that you can do the work and you can meet deadlines um, and you, you're quick on your feet, you can think creatively, uh, I still think the world is, is just really open to you. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I'm sure that you're very, very proud of them um, and the work that they're continuing to do and coming back to talk and support and give advice to your current students. So I think that that's great. Now, Professor Guy, I want to talk a little bit about your participation in our College Connect summer program. Um, so when did you hear about the program? When did you decide to write a proposal for it? And what has your experience been thus far? Um, and what advice would you give to students who are interested in summer programming? Um, and what could College Connect do for them? Well, I heard about it just a few years ago, but I definitely wanted to be involved because uh, I actually have friends who have uh, children who are in high school, and um, they always were saying, you know, we wish that students in high school could be taught to write, that they need to have time, someone needs to give them time to really go through their writing and talk about the act of writing. It's a discipline, and I really enjoy teaching that. And I think it's extremely valuable to start when you're in high school. And not just, this is not just writing for a diary, not dear diary. It's not writing an essay. It's writing in a whole new way uh, that combines research, interviewing other people, 
and adhering to certain rules of writing. So it's an enormous discipline. And I have students read about great writers, great journalists, and how they describe their work. And it just makes everyone super excited, myself included, to see people really realize, wow, I can interview people and tell people's really important stories to the world. I can find out things that will make a difference in my community. And I think you can never start too young, too soon to, to learn your power. So Professor Guy, I want to pull up some of your students' work. Um, so from this past uh, College Connect in the summer of 2020, I want to pull up some of their final projects and you to kind of give an overview of what is going on in those projects and what are some of the things that students are doing. So what are some of the things that are going on here? So um, I propose that the students pick a major story that they would like to cover. And I want them to play the role of a television and a print journalist both because they'll probably have to do both. And so there's Ariana uh, telling her story as she would as a television reporter. And then she also did a print story um, about something of consequence in their neighborhood. And with her uh, story, um, it's about voting um, and what would it mean to require voting and what does it mean and what are people saying in her community, letting their voices be heard. And how did you go through breaking down the projects with the students? What were some of the key things that you were trying to teach them as they were developing these projects? Well, I wanted them to go out and talk to people from different perspectives so that um, they could tell stories that no one else had told, to find people who no one else had interviewed, to, to break a story of great meaning that gave voice to people who had previously been voiceless. Because they know their communities very well. And so let's hear those stories. Well, yes, absolutely. And as I went through the final celebrations, they told amazing stories and were very passionate about um, the work that they were putting in and, and seemed very engaged as far as being able to tell these stories from the perspectives of their communities, which you said is so key in what people are looking, what uh, the industry is looking to actually put out there in the media, which I think is awesome. Absolutely. I tell my students they're in the sweet spot. If we talk like a sports journalist, they're in the sweet spot because uh, the editors and producers and directors of television, radio and newspapers and online now want their stories. Well, that's amazing, that's awesome. So Professor Guy, I wanna take us to the DePaul Journalism website. Um, so what information should students, uh, prospective students, parents or teachers be able to pull from the DePaul website um, and what would you advise for them um, as information that could be useful moving forward um, in their journey to get into this field? I think they should look at the resources um, that I've mentioned uh, that they can get involved in, including, you know, the media, the, the media of the journalism department, um, the core curriculum also, um, just to make sure that they have their classes set up in a way that uh, starts from the basics and builds upon that and that they can give themselves some time to decide which area they want to do. There's that uh, BAJD 
So some people want to eventually go into law, which I think is a great idea. Uh, others want to do a combined program. So I think that they should look at um, the basics, the news writing, uh, magazine reporting, sports reporting, and try a little bit of all of that to see what area do they think really is right for them. Definitely do not wait until senior year to get involved or to really start to build your career. I tell my freshmen, you're building your career starting right now. So I would get a taste of just the, the key basics of journalism to see what area would most interest you and really get started from just hit the ground running. Well, that's awesome. Well, Professor Guy, I've come to my final question. Um, what final advice would you give for the student who's sitting in their English classroom um, and then watching their favorite uh, news media show um, and they want to become a professional. They want to either sit in the chair at the desk or sit behind the camera. What would be your final advice for that student? I would advise one book and that is Robert A. Cairo, that's C-A-R-O, his book called Working. He describes what it's like to be a journalist, to work as a journalist in a way that I find so incredibly empowering. Also, you know, choose someone you like. Who's your favorite interviewer? Why is that person your favorite interviewer? Um, watch as much media as you can and see whose cadence do you like? Or listen to old radio, uh, Edward R. Murrow. You can find online his broadcasts, live broadcast reporting from the battleground of World War II, some of the most amazing journalism. Go online and find these wonderful um, people who have come before, Ed Bradley at 60 Minutes. Watch his interviews. Um, you can listen to uh, and Google people who've made tremendous um, impact. The first environmental reporter, um, the first woman investigative reporter, Ida Tarbell. Uh, go back into the far reaches and listen to their broadcasts, listen to their interviews, read about the history of journalism and how journalists work. Ernie Pyle, P-Y-L-E, who, who covered war, um, and just find your hero or heroine. And I think that will help a lot just to understand who's come before you and on whose shoulders you stand and understand their greatest principles and how they work. Well, thank you for that final advice. So Professor Guy, I wanna thank you for your time and your, your wisdom and your knowledge today. Um, speaking from all of us in College Access, we couldn't thank you enough for the participation and the support that you've given our office. Um, we hope to have you this summer for our College Connect 2020 summer program. And for those who are looking to get more information about that summer program, please go to go.depaul.edu forward slash college hyphen connect. Um, so my name again has been Jason Carter, the Assistant Director of College Access, and this has been Majors to Careers with Professor Sandra Guy, and we hope to see you all soon. Thank you very much. See you soon.